Hello Macquarie, welcome to Church Online. So great you can join us today. Hey, I just want to wish you all a very blessed year for this year, 2023. Say hello in the chat to everyone else watching. If you're on holidays, I hope the weather is great and you're enjoying a nice relax. Also, I just want you all to know that God is on your side. No matter what the situation or circumstance you are going through, God is for you and never forget that He is for you. Just a quick prayer, Lord Jesus, I just thank you for 2022. But as we look to 2023, this year, Lord God, I pray for health. I pray for safety. I pray we'll move closer towards you, Lord God. And I pray that if anyone is struggling at the moment or has their own battles, Lord Jesus, I just pray you'll be by their side. You'll comfort them, Lord Jesus, and just give them the right path to follow and direction. In your precious name. Amen. Well, coming up, we have Mark McLennan preaching. Really looking forward to that one. Now we have some worship, guys. So lean in and enjoy. I came across a quote by Rick Warren. It says, The deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of pain. Thanking God during a trial, trusting Him when tempted, surrendering while suffering, and loving Him when He seems distant. Right here and now, we have a moment, we have another opportunity to be real and raw with God, to dig deep and to worship Him in spite of what we are facing. God's promises still stand each and every one of them, we are still very much in his hands. So let's hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promises is faithful. Let's sing.
to those who may be playing from home uh, and there's bonus points for you if you happen to be holidaying anywhere and you've taken time out from swimming or fishing or sightseeing anything like that 
to join with us online and watch church this morning. There has got to be an extra jewel in your crown for commitment. And welcome to you guys who are here in the house with us this morning. I don't know how you're feeling, but I feel pretty excited about heading into this new year. I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, it's going to be a year of transition for us as a church, which I love transition. It's exciting. And it may be even the year when we turn some soil on our community centre. That would be exciting. Sue and I are currently living in our caravan um, down the backyard. Now, before you say, you poor souls, uh, that must be so hard for you living in the caravan, <laughs> it's pretty schmick, and I actually love it. I think there's a photo of it up there. Yeah, that's me preparing the sermon for today. Um, now... <laughs> The reason why we are in the van is that we're planning on doing some travel overseas this year. So I thought it, Sue thought it would be fun to pop the house on Airbnb just to see how it goes. And, uh, but what she didn't realise being a newbie to Airbnb is you need to block out the times that the house is unavailable. And in a very short period of time, we had five bookings for our house in Holmesville. <laughs> Who travels to Holmesville? So, our house is booked out for the entire of January, well, up and down the van. But it's great. It's really good. And, uh, yeah, I don't know whether I want to move back to the house. <laughs> Apart from feeling like it's holidays in the van, there's a sense in which being out of your house gives you the time to stop. Stop looking for all those things that, oh, I need to repair that, oh, I need some paint on that, oh, that might need doing. And you have time to just think about life. And I sit on that veranda looking out at my chickens. Oh, you can see Mildred there. She's just in the front. She's my favourite chicken. She'll come and sit with me most of the day. Uh, and I have time to just think. So over the past couple of weeks, that's what I've been doing. I've been contemplating what this year may look like for us. I do enjoy a fresh new year, that excitement of turning the first page of the calendar and seeing straight away that I have three regos during the next week and a half. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? New Year's also a time of new journeys for some, moving on to high school, moving on to uni, or for my beautiful little granddaughter, Lara, her first year at school, and she's so pumped and excited for it. And I think Sean is too, a little bit more freedom in her days. New Year's is also that opportunity to reflect on the things that have happened over the past year and do a bit of forward planning for some resolutions. Sue and I don't do resolutions. Um, we have a little tradition which involves, and this is going to come up for you, telling each other three things that you have loved about them in the last 12 months. Three things that you have struggled with about them in the last three months, and three things that you're excited about for the next year. And then we come up with what our word is going to be for the year. Now, gentlemen in the room, I want you to understand that is nine, nine things that I have had to share with my wife, plus a word, and three of those things are in the never go there zone. <laughs> so it's like walking through a minefield, and there's often a few tears, but, um, but over the years, that process has proven to be really good for us. So whilst I dread it, I also value it. Turns out, I'm very deaf now. One of the things Sue doesn't like. <laughs> and my hearing's getting very worse. And she's sick of guessing, or me guessing, what it is that she said. So she wants me to wear my hearing aids more. <laughs> Fair enough. OK. Sue's word for the year this year is adventure. And she kicked that off by this week going to the bogey, bogey hole one week, one afternoon for a swim. We've lived in Newcastle for 40 years and we've never been to the bogey hole, let alone swim in it. Are we even Nova Castrians? <laughs> but it was glorious. And if you haven't done it, I really recommend it. It was just so good. 
My word for this year is a very simple one. D. Last year's word for me was finish. I just needed to get through the year. But this year it's a B. This is going to be my first year of full retirement. And I want to go into it ready to be fully present in all of the moments and opportunities that I'm going to experience. And I want to be proactive in ensuring that I make the absolute most of every day that is given to me. Now, I'd say that my B word probably stems from the 24 funerals that I conducted last year. Because when I'm preparing a eulogy for a person, what I see a lot of the time is that people reach the end of their lives way sooner than they expected, way sooner than they planned. And what they leave behind so often is an absolute mess. Broken family relationships, words that have either been said or not said, bitterness that's been held on to. So, yeah, that's been a lot of that formulation of B. I don't want to get to that point. I want it all done well. But probably the most intentional aspect of my B is that I want to be real in my faith and how my faith plays out on a day-to-day -day basis. Not that I haven't been trying to do that up till now, but this year I want to take it next level. I find myself at a point in life right now where in terms of my faith, I feel like I've read a lot and listened to many. I've studied a lot. I've learned a lot, heard a lot, learned a little, and messed up stacks. I've witnessed both the positive and the negative examples of how faith can be lived out in your day-to-day -day life. And now at 61, uh, I finally feel like I understand what it's all about. And for me, it all began to make sense when I started to pass every aspect of my daily life through the filter of who Jesus is and how he did life. And I also, so my behaviours, my forgiveness, my time, how did Jesus do that? That's the filter. I also did that with my faith life. And these days I find that my faith requires just two things of me. Love God and love people. But do them both with gusto. Do them both really, really well. I don't want to complicate it. I just want to keep it at that. Love God, love people. But reaching that point wasn't easy to get to because part of the process involved me having to recognise that some aspects of my faith, aspects that I was taught growing up from sitting in church over a lot of years, were perhaps not as important as I thought they were. They weren't really passing that filter of what would Jesus do in this situation? How would he have approached that? So for me, there are some aspects of my faith that I've just let go. It doesn't change my relationship with God. It doesn't change how I feel about Jesus. I let them go. And some of them were... The sacred cows. But I focus now on those two things. Love God 
absolutely joyfully and consciously and love people unconditionally, inclusively, and without judgment. My wife Sue is not a great joke teller. She is a great, I will laugh at your jokes and smile, and her laughs are as good as a smile, and she smiles well. But she shared a joke with me just before Christmas, and I thought it was a cracker, so I'm going to share it with you today. There was three construction workers working on a high-rise building when it was being built. There was um, an Irishman, there was a, um, an Italian, and there was an Australian. So each lunchtime, they would sit down on one of those girders up there high and dangle their legs over the side, and they'd open their lunch boxes and eat their lunch together. So anyhow, the, uh, the Italian opened his lunchbox and saw what was inside. He said, oh, Mamma mia! Pastrami sandwiches again! If I have pastrami sandwiches, what's more, I'm going to jump off this building. Then the Irishman opened his lunchbox and he said, Oh, potato, 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 why do I always get potato? Don't do a good English, Irish accent, by the way. Uh, if I get a potato sandwich tomorrow, I'm just going to jump off this building. The Australian opens his lunchbox and, oh, Vegemite sandwiches. Seriously? If I keep getting Vegemite sandwiches, I'm going to jump off this building. So the next day, they're up on the work site and they sit down for lunch and the uh, Italian opened his lunchbox. And, Mamma mia, here we go, pastrami sandwiches. And he just throws his lunchbox and jumps off the building. Aggressive, but uh, the Irishman opened his lunchbox. Potato, hey, potato. Jumps off the building. The Australian opens his lunchbox. <laughs> Vegemite again. Off the building he goes. So it's all very, very sad for the families, and they decide to have a joint funeral. And at the funeral, the three wives are chatting together. And the Italian's wife said, oh, if only he told me that he doesn't like pastrami sandwiches, I would have changed, given him something else. The Irishman's wife said, I had no idea he didn't like potato. If I'd known, I would have given him something else. The Australian's wife said, well, look at me, he cuts his own lunch. <laughs> So where I'm going with that? Well, I've begun to understand how easy it is to live your life reactively. Stuff happens and we react. Relationship stuff comes up and we react. It seems like we're going down a certain path and we don't like it, so we react. But our reactions are usually not very well planned. Rarely do they involve a lot of thought. Jumping off a building would seem excessive. And rarely do they involve a lot of thought, input, or conversation with God. Except to say, help, when we are so far down the rabbit hole that it seems all we can do is say, God, help me. And it seems to sound like a nah, 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 nah. And we do that a lot. We do that a lot. So my, my retelling of Sue's joke is to remind you that when it comes to your life, you make your own lunch. You make your own decisions. And if you don't like what's going on, you need to change it. If you don't like what's happening in your relationship, be proactive and do something. Speak up. Get the help you need. Change what needs to be changed. And if there is any abuse or bad stuff going on, that may mean even getting out. If you don't like your job, then be proactive about looking for something that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to think, I'm keen to go to work. It's going to make you happy. And at least half the time, 
you're going to enjoy going there. If you don't like the person that you see in the mirror, be proactive and change whatever it is that allows you to be the version of you, not based on what others may think or expectations that you believe are there, but based on what it is that makes you be the best version of you that you can be. And if you're not happy with your relationship with God, then do something about it and draw closer to him. There's a quote from Walt Disney that I find works really well in my spiritual life. He said, if you're going to believe in something, believe in it all the way. That's what he did in his creative world. But in my spiritual world, that's what I do with my faith. I believe it, so I want to act on it. I want to do something with it. I want, it to, I want to allow it to shape and form who I am, and I want to be what I believe. Good year ahead. I love the book of James. More than any other book in the Bible, perhaps, because it's kind of like the Old Testament book of Proverbs all dressed up in New Testament clothes. And it has some amazing focus points on practical, proactive actions for life that are simply written and there to just pick up and, yeah, I like that, I'm going to run with that and give that a go. And more than any book in the Bible, I find that it manages to shine a spotlight for me on those areas of life that perhaps need a little bit more focus. So in James 4, 13 to 17, James gives this beautiful no-nonsense reminder, which I thought was worth a look at this time of year when we're all planning and sorting out what next year might look like. Listen to how no-nonsense this is. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city. We'll spend a year there. We will buy and sell and make money. You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? It is a mist that appears for a little and is gone. Then it disappears. Instead, you should say, if it pleases the Lord, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you brag. You brag about the evil plans your pride produces. And this kind of bragging is evil. So suppose, so suppose someone knows the good deeds they should do, but suppose they don't do them. By not doing those good deeds, they sin. <laughs> Beautiful, practical, simple. Mm, don't know. I think as Christians, we have no problem at all acknowledging Jesus as Lord. We can say it. We can believe it in principle. But when it comes to the business of daily living, we are very good at compartmentalising that fact. And we just kind of pop it over there and we function as if Jesus really isn't our Lord. We acknowledge him in the spiritual aspect of our lives, particularly on Sundays. And we're very good at worship. You heard us. We're very good. But often we don't even acknowledge him or make any room for him and his input into our daily lives. We make our daily plans or we plan to do nothing and just drift through the day. We set our life goals, we accomplish our dreams or at least we try to without checking in on him or waiting on him for guidance. We pray for his blessings and his guidance and counsel. But we don't ever wait long enough 
for the response. We expect it then, but we don't wait for it. But James wasn't having a go at people for making plans. He was pointing out that what is lacking in their planning, that's what the problem was. And that's a good thing for all of us to take away. See, if God wants you somewhere, then that's where you need to be. And let me tell you, if he wants it, then he will make it known, whether you want to know it or not. And he might do that by making you feel unsettled or uncomfortable. And sometimes it gets even a little bit more drastic than that. Retrospect is the great confirmer of this process where God's concerned. I look back now in, in, in my relationships, in, in parenting, and particularly over my career. And so many times I've had that God prompting. And I know what it is. I've, I know what it is that I needed to be doing something else or be somewhere else or act in a certain way. But I ignored it, usually because it's a bit hard or it's inconvenient. But every time, God has used a closed door to move me from where I was then a very nicely open door to take me to where I need to be. Now that sounds like a beautiful process. Ah, oh, we are gently guided from here and we're put here where he wants us to be. But that doesn't express the emotion that is happening to you in that process. Being uprooted or made single or taken somewhere new and challenging and the anxiety of that time around the unknown and the uncertainty. But oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, when you become aware of that process in your life, of God working with you, or him working in spite of you, it becomes so, e so much easier to take on James' words and acknowledge that God has it all mapped out. And you can either get there kicking and in an anxious mess, or you can get there with peace and confidence that God has got it. And he wants to reveal it to you, and he just wants to be able to communicate that with you. Proverbs 19 verse 6, a bit of a paraphrase, said, Go ahead and make plans. But God will direct and redirect you as you go through your plans. So I guess my encouragement for you to consider today is we head, as we head into this new year and make new plans is to do it with God. Let him guide the decisions about who you date, who you marry, what job, career you choose, and how you plan your day or your week or your year, every aspect of life, he is interested in. And if at first it's, he seems silent in that process, then take heart from James' words in just a, a little bit before this, where he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Or David's words in Psalm 27, 14, where he says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Because I actually think that it is in the waiting that God begins his greatest work in your life. I don't know what you might be heading into this year. Maybe there's still stuff hanging over from last year. And the idea of giving space to God and time to work your life out right now at this point of the messiness might seem a bit... I'm no theologian. 
And I would say my, my, my faith is very simple. Love God, love people. But over my 61 years, I have been open to God and he has taken me places that I would never have dreamed on, of. And he has brought people into my life who have blessed me incredibly. He has shepherded me, shepherded me through raising four daughters and other life calamities. And he continues to bless and amaze me every day. It's not all rosy. There's hard times. But gee, I, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way than doing it with God and allowing him to have some guidance and input into my life. So as we head into this new year and allow space for God to guide us individually and as a church, I want to leave you with these last four points just to ponder as we go. Realise that what you see as success is not necessarily the same as God's will. God's will is always best, even if God says no. Sometimes what we seek is not from good motives, but sometimes it is. Try to pay attention to the response of your plans from those around you your family, your friends here at church, particularly from God. Folks, I hope this is going to be a great year for all of you. We've been through some tough ones. My prayer is that you're going to walk it very closely with God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the journey that we are able to do with you. You make it so available to us. And yet so often we choose to just let go of your hand and walk it on our own. We've got this, God. We've got this. It's okay. Father, I pray that we will once again recognize the importance and the significance of having you walk with us, carry us, support us, nurture us over this next year. Help our plans to be your plans and help it to be an amazing year, Father. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thanks, Mark, for preaching. That was a great message. Look, it's giving time. Look, and I know this time of year, credit cards looking a bit slim. We've all given to our friends, family. Um, and also we've just treated ourselves to probably maybe a holiday, gone out to some nice restaurants. But you know what? There's always time to give into the kingdom. So bless you as you give today. Hey, we have a picnic at Spears Point Park, 22nd of January, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. We're going to have cricket, volleyball, races for the kids, live music. Bring your rug your wine and cheese, your life group, friends and family. It's going to be a great time for the generations to come together and enjoy these school holidays. So see you on the 22nd of January. Thanks for joining us today. Next week we have Jacques preaching. It's going to be a cracker, so make sure you join us then. May God bless you all. Enjoy your school holidays. See you next week.